So here we are. Um, we should have done this at the beginning of the project, but um, I guess it's good to reflect on these things now. Um, so Wait, I'm gonna interrupt because there's the reason right there that I wanted to live here. Okay. Can they see? Um, probably not. Oh, there's some. Yeah, kangaroos. It's hard to tell, but there's about 20 just over that ridge, and you can see some of the big males sitting up. Kangaroos, wallabies, and we won't be able to show you koalas unless we climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to um, talk about um, our motivations basically for um, building a custom home. Um, so when we originally started our research, we identified that um, a lot of them weren't actually catering to our needs. Uh, they were providing these massive spaces. Um, massive spaces, they didn't really connect with the landscape and they were designed for small plots. So when we ended up finding um, the land that we really fell in love with um, out here because of all the kangaroos and the natural uh, bushland and all that kind of stuff, um, we realized that none of those homes would really suit the landscape, um, especially with the crazy um, slope that we have. I and, wouldn't call it crazy, but... And who really needs two games rooms, a media room... Yeah, a home theater... Five breakout rooms, like, just so much wasted space. Yeah, so uh, we decided to tailor it ourselves um, and it kind of aligns with uh, what I'm studying at the moment. I'm studying uh, commercial design and um, I don't know, this was a good project for me. Um, just to understand the actual process itself and uh, the decisions that go into it. So we engaged a uh, friend of a friend who did the actual concept design for us and um, we fell in love with the design. Um, that was probably our first mistake. Um, Damn you, Ed. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, so where we've gone from there is uh, we engaged multiple builders to get quotes. I guess when we first started off, uh, we were quite naive in the actual process and um, how we should go about it. Process or costs? Well, yeah, costs, costs were one of the main main drivers but also the um, the connection that you actually have with the uh, services that they're providing and the actual people delivering them so you want to make sure that you have a you think you will have a good relationship with the actual builder and um, the people that you're actually interacting with on a let's say a, a weekly basis so um, we actually ended up deciding to use salt construction um, up here in Queensland um, and more likely Brisbane. Uh, the reason why we chose them was because um, they were quite down to earth. Um, this is their um, first major independent um, build. Uh, everything else has kind of been... Well, from start to finish anyway. Yeah, from start to finish. Um, most of the stuff that we understood at the time was um, mostly uh, finishing other people's work and um, some minor repairs and um, upgrades and stuff like that on pre-existing structures. So, and I mean, we could have went with builders who had more experience and have built more houses, bigger houses. But at the end of the day, I think why we picked Sean as our builder is because we could see that he was actually there for us as the client and he really listened to us and when we had ideas for the most part he wasn't kiboshing them he was working with us to yeah you to want build the house that we actually envisioned and that's one of the things that really struck me is he saw the vision that we were going for whereas a lot of people wanted us to rein it in or, or change yeah. things that were really important to us. So he really supported us in the values that we were seeking. Um, he probably had similar values as well. But um, yeah, he, he was just a... Um, personality. Personality, personality for sure. Um, you want someone who's approachable and isn't gonna, um, yeah, as Chris said, kibosh your ideas. Um, and they've been flexible all the way up until today, like, um, and <laughs> until, today. <laughs> until today. <laughs> um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, yeah, it all until ends. next time. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're still supporting us. Um, so yeah, um, the timeline of the project, um, it started, um, when did it start? Oh my god. I can't even remember August now. August of 20... 
August of 2014 when we bought the land. Yeah, so um, it's been a very long process for us, uh, mostly because we haven't really known what we're doing. Um, this is our first home that we've ever built, um, so getting the, the resources and the funding and the knowledge together, um, it's taken us a long time. Um, I guess our initial hurdle was uh, valuation, so banks, banks pretty much. Um, what was our first hurdle? First hurdle was buying the finding lunch. a builder, <laughs> finding a builder, and yeah. then finalizing a plan. That took us well and truly a year to find a builder and finalize the plan. And when I say finalize the plan, I mean getting to a point where we actually had felt drawings. happy with it. Because I don't know if our plan is still finalized, even as the house is going up. So. It's still growing, and the budget, well, the expense is still growing as well. So sometimes a good idea to uh, completely lock in these things at the um, contract stage. But um, I don't know. We just can't help ourselves. <laughs> well, um, I hope you kind of enjoy listening to um, our story. Uh, if you have any questions, just um, give us a bell. And um, you'll... Give us a bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a bell. A we, call, we... a message? Yeah, a message. Yeah. So um, thanks for listening and um, you'll be getting more updates from us. Um, sorry about the poor lighting as well. Um, we've been quite lazy in getting this together, so this was the perfect Try. opportunity. Okay, have a good one. See ya. Bye.